Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, not wearing a bow tie because I'm too lazy to put one on for this video. And we are doing another installment of the monthly reviews roundup for March 2023. We're gonna look back at all of the EPs and albums and compilations and mixtapes and whatever, and uh, talk about my scores and give a little mini review of all of those things that have happened in that time frame. So let's start off with some that I missed back in February for the review roundup and uh, ones that I rated. So uh, overall, I would say a pretty solid month. You'll see a lot of very, very similar scores. I will say a lot of very similar scores for sure. But uh, we will start with Sultan and Shepard Forever Now. Uh, While well, the majority of this project is your kind of run of the male progressive house, there's a couple more intriguing cuts from the record here and there, but uh, kind of with a calming atmosphere and relaxing tones, this LP is sort of uh, has an ethereal sound to it without being too over the top. And uh, with that, it will score a bow tied 6 out of 10. Then we're moving on to the Adult Art Club, the self-titled album. Uh, and if you don't know who this is, this is kind of um, as involved by Zach Waters, his name involved in this project, if you know who that is. Uh, but uh, yeah, this uh, debut and self-titled project from Adult Art Club is uh, quite the listening experience, keeping a predominantly underground club tone throughout. Uh, this record has some of the best production while it was staying within its quality niche. Uh, bouncing around tempo and style, it always comes back to that kind of chill lounge beat that plays so marvelously into the whole sound design of the LP. And with that, this will score a Bowtied 7. Now we've got Charlie's Fun You Can Feel heading into actual March releases now. Uh, this album is a solid mix of bedroom pop fused with indie tronica and relies on the stylized processing of vocals and uh, as well as raw instrumentation. Uh, while at times the lyrics can be hard to understand, the carefree lighthearted nature of the production carries true. Uh, fun You Can Feel is truly a record that feels fun and is also scoring a bow tied 7. Then we're moving on to Coven, Higher Ground Part 2. Uh, yet another project that feels right at home within Coven's discography. I think I enjoyed b both Part 1 and 2 equally, as they both had the relatively different styles, I would say. I know a lot of people enjoyed 1 more than 2, but I thought they were they were pretty pretty same same for me. Uh, Higher Ground Part 2 is a lot of the same, but throws in an odd surprise here and there. Uh, and I will also give this a bow tied 7. Then we've got Athero's Sketchbook album. Uh, this album is a magical journey through classical sound, and with airy piano licks and bright chords, uh, Sketchbook is a modern take on a very elegant genre. And it will also get a bow tied 7. And uh, then there's Whipped Cream, Someone You Can Count On, the EP. Uh, this EP has a lot going for it and I would say a lot going against it, sadly. Uh, Someone You Can Count On is backed by Dark Tonality, all supported by an amalgamation of genres. Uh, there are sections and drops throughout that felt like whipped cream's finest to date, yet an overarching sense of incompleteness and a linear structure that kind of bogs it down. Uh, in the end though, there was more that I latched onto and enjoyed and found to uh, really appreciate this EP as a holistic endeavor. And it will score a bow tied six. Then we've got Miley Cyrus's Endless Summer Vacation. Uh, scored by the limelight of a very public divorce, uh, Endless Summer Vacation is a return to a more personable, raw Miley. Uh, showcasing a solid vocal range and a beat variety, uh, this record isn't nearly as stylized as her last, but uh, makes up for it for being a lot more emotional. And this will score a bow tied seven. Uh, then there's Aether's Moonstone EP. Uh, with commanding rim shots and chill beats, Moonstone is a classic trip chill project. Uh, in the realm of chill out music, this is incredibly solid, great production, and a well set atmosphere. This will score, surprise, surprise, a bow tied seven. Now we've got 100 Gexes, <laughs> 10,000 Gex. Uh, still haven't quite hopped onto the hyper pop bandwagon, but I do pr appreciate the record for its quirkiness and out of the box storytelling. Uh, with such crude sound design though, it's hard to not simultaneously love and hate it, I would say. Uh, and this is a quote from actually my wife while we listened to the project. She said, this is trash. It's a mix of Ross's keyboard music and a VeggieTales remix, is how my wife thinks of it. But I give it a bow tied five. Then we've got Eddie's uh, Onzaker Craft Volume 1 EP. Uh, in a project that feels more res than, Ezzy, than Eddie while still being on the res label, uh, this EP is a tonally dark project, all played to the tune of a hypnotic bass line. The tracks are well mixed and interesting, but ultimately suffers from sounding too much like res. That's a little bit too much uncanny for me. Uh, I was looking for more Eddie in this project than Rez, and I know this on Rez's label, but it just felt like a ripoff rather than Eddie being his own thing on a different label, but uh, this is going to score a bow tied six. 
Then there's the self-titled KX5. Uh, for time and place in the musical landscape, where house music is a little all over the place, KX5 reminds us of where we've been and all the friends we've made along the way. This will score a bow tied 8 out of 10. Then we've got M83's Fantasy. Uh, this is yet another dream pop shoegaze hybrid record to add to an already stellar discography. Uh, taking more ethereal and a more ethereal approach to this record, the whole album genuinely feels like a celestial fantasy, uh, drifting through time and space as you do so. Uh, opting out of the more commercialized sound, this project is one giant cohesive unit front to back. And it will score a bow tied 7. Uh, moving on to uh, the Sullivan King Thrones of Blood album. Uh, Sullivan King's third studio album is a lot of the same for me personally. You've got some of the greatest tracks in his discography here, but also some of the most overblown. His metal bro step fusion is very hit or miss for me, and sadly there were more misses than hits on this record. But I did tend to enjoy the ones that were hits. Obviously, that makes sense. But my biggest gripe with this project is the very flat mixing that just is plagued all throughout. Um, for such a dynamic record, you think the mixing would have gotten a little bit more attention. This is going to score a bow tied 5 out of 10. Then we've got uh, JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown's Scaring the Hose. Uh, in what is undoubtedly the most bizarre, off-the-wall, off-kiltered album of the year, Danny Brown and JPEG team up for what will very likely be the hip-hop album of the year. Uh, Scaring the Hose takes its internet lingo seriously, as it is very it is the furthest thing from what you would hear with commercial radio-friendly music. With odd mixing choices, chippy vocal inflections, and glitch-hop supremacy, this record is already a classic. Classic. And it will score a bow tied eight with a thought that I might bring it to a nine to I'm still I'm still teetering the line. I'm, I'm really liking it. Of all the albums this month, this is the one I've come back to the most, uh, surprisingly. So um, but speaking of albums I've come back to a lot, uh, we've got Night Punk's Human. Uh, I honestly wasn't paying much attention to this record for a majority of its release cycle, and I definitely regret doing so in hindsight. That being said, I was able to jump into this record front to back with little or to no prior biases lingering or lingering thoughts, which I thought served the record well. Uh, individually, the tracks on this album are absolute fire, but when listening to the project holistically, it just is that much better for me. Uh, the track list is crafted in such a way that each of the track builds upon the energy of its predecessor to culminate into one giant unit. Uh, I have heard, uh, this is some of the best underground production I feel like I have heard in a long time. Uh, it's energetic, it's destructive, it's heart pounding, and in the end, uh, pieced together with some of the most intentionality that you've I think ever that I've heard in a long time, uh, it makes you truly feel satisfied. And this is going to score a bow tied nine out of 10. Moving on to Owl City's Coco Moon. Uh, <laughs> uh, plagued by weak synths and shallow lyricism, this record tries to tug at your feel-good nostalgia, but ends up sounding like a spoiled memory. Uh, with little to no variation from track to track, this whole record is just stale. Uh, in an attempt to hide its off-putting vocal performances, Adam util utilizes copious amounts of key uh, and inflection changes, but to no avail. Uh, this is a new low for Owl City, personally. This is going to score a bow tied three. Then we've got Armin Van Buren's Feel Again. This is an absolutely gigantic project that way overstates its welcome. At uh, 34 tracks long and over an hour and 45 minutes, uh, you can definitely feel a little bit of everything within the overarching house genre, but is just, I think, too much. Um, it definitely highlights Armin's strengths and weaknesses as a producer, for sure. Getting uh, the best with his long, kind of drawn-out, emotionally progressive house tracks, and his worst with his trend-chasing slap house. Uh, this is truly a mixed bag, but uh, in the end, it's going to score a bow tied four. Then we've got Boy Genius, The Record. Uh, this is pure indie bliss. The trio of Phoebe, Lucy, and Julian are a force to be reckoned with. The storytelling and lyricism are superb with strong accompanying instrumentation. Um, this is one that I might bring up in the future too. I'm really, really enjoying this one. I'm exploring it some more, uh, diving in really, really deep to it, even though I have already done a deep dive. But uh, for now, it's going to score a bow tied eight. Uh, our penultimate record of the uh, month is Elderbrook's Little Love. Uh, this record stands upon Elderbrook's killer vocals and weighty bass walls. Uh, soft production is the name of the game here as Elderbrook keeps the record fairly down. Uh, as much as I enjoyed the project, I definitely lo it definitely lost some steam in the back half, uh, but was a pretty great start. And this is going to score a bow tied 7. And our last record of the month that I talked about or covered was Habstract's 
heritage. Uh, Habstract's debut album is filled with his signature glassy synth-driven house, uh, but sadly, it, the lack of variation and narrative through line, despite appearing like there should be a through line with interludes and uh, a prologue and a prelogue and stuff, um, yeah, it just uh, d d doesn't do a whole ton. It doesn't offer a lot, I would say. Uh, Dancing Around, a fusion of tech and bass house heritage is your run-of-the-mill house project, I would say. And it is going to score a Bowtide 6. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of March. Let me know what you think of any of these projects. Was I too harsh? Was I too lenient on some of these projects? Let me know any and all things in the comment section below. And maybe if some things I missed, let me know if I need to go back and listen to some of these projects. I definitely will, which I did before and have done every month so far. So uh, other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtide Media, and I will see you guys in another video.